Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about different properties of lipids and the structure and function of them. If you are an AP Bio, this is topic 1.4 mostly. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the three different types or categories of lipids. So the most abundant type of lipid on earth is called a triglyceride. Now triglyceride is made out of a glycerol and three fatty acids. And here is the like um, drawing or molecular structure of a triglyceride. We'll look into triglycerides in a bit more detail and talk about the different component parts. So here though, we can see this um, fatty acid is made of hydrogens and carbons. And we also see some oxygens. So lipids, their three main elements of life that they're made from are C, H, and O, just like we saw in carbohydrates. Um, and you can see this fatty acid, this here, this is the fatty acids. So there's three fatty acids, that's why it's called a triglyceride. And you can see here and imagine how in all of those bonds, the electrons are being equally pulled on and shared. So one of the major properties of lipids is that they are nonpolar. So they are nonpolar or hydrophobic. They repel water. They do not mix well with water. Okay, another type of, of lipid are phospholipids. Now these phospholipids, they have their lipid parts, but they also have a phosphate group attached to the glycerol. You see how there's a glycerol right here? So when we look at, um, actually, let me clear this off and kind of just give you a better visual. Um, when we talk about a phospholipid, you can see here it has a two fatty acid tails. And here's another phospholipid. So imagine that you break this bond right here, and then you add a phosphate group, and now you have remained with like two um, fatty acid tails. So you have your glycerol, two fatty acids, and then a phosphate group attached. Uh, we'll talk in this PowerPoint or in this video in a little bit more detail about phospholipids and their structure. And then the third type of lipid are sterols. Now, sterols include cholesterol, you can see here in cell membranes, as well as um, your steroid hormones like testosterone or estrogen, and then your vitamins like your lipid soluble vitamins. Okay, so what are some functions of fats or lipids? Well, you have some vitamins like I just mentioned. You also have on like plants, they have this waxy cuticle on, on their surface that makes it um, kind of like waterproof. Then it can be used for insulation. So you find a lot of mammals who live in cold, cold temperatures will have a lot of lipids or triglycerides stored as um, blubber to keep them warm. Now, one of my favorite um, parts about lipids is their waterproofing capabilities or abilities because lipids are hydrophobic and nonpolar and repel water. They're the perfect macro molecule to waterproof ducks. So ducks, they have an oil gland at the base of their tail. And what they do is when it looks like they're biting their tail and itching themselves, they're actually getting oil on their beak or their bill and then spreading it all over their flower, their flowers, their feathers. And they're essentially waterproofing the outside of their body. So their soft down feathers on the underneath part of these um, are nice and insulating. So now when a duck dives underwater or a bird dives underwater, the water that's polar does not mix with the non-polar oil on the feathers and it just rolls right off the surface. So the water just goes right around the birds, never seeping through. Therefore, their skin stays dry and the, even though they're diving underwater, the water never touches their body and their down feathers stay dry and nice and warm. So it also works for waterproofing. Now, let's go ahead and talk about these fatty acids on the triglycerides and on the um, phospholipids. So here we see a chain of carbons and we have a whole bunch of hydrogens attached. So we call this molecule a hydrocarbon and all of the bonds are equally sharing the electrons. So this is a nonpolar molecule. Okay. So when we look at fatty acids, we have two different categories. 
We have saturated and unsaturated. Saturated means full. So here we look at this hydrocarbon or this fatty acid and we see it is full of hydrogens. There are no more open places to bond any more hydrogens. It is saturated and it's a straight chain. Now we have unsaturated. That means it's not full. And you can see here this double bond between the two carbons. They can actually fit more hydrogens in this chain. Now this causes a kinked appearance. This is, these are both significant for their overall structure and properties when they're part of something. So um, basically, as we'll see in a few slides, these saturated fats are solid at room temperature. So when you think of butter or lard or like Crisco and how it's solid or even coconut oil at like a cooler temperature or um, like bacon grease eventually hardens. So those are gonna be your straight chained fatty acids and they can pack so closely together that they actually form a solid. Now you're unsaturated, this is gonna be like your olive oil. Think about a bunch of saturated fatty acids with like double bonds. They just can't get close enough together to solidify and therefore they remain liquid at room temperature. So sometimes you'll see a triglyceride, instead of drawing out all of those carbons and hydrogens, you can see them like this. So here, this would be your saturated fatty acid, and this would be a, um, unsaturated. This is actually a mono unsaturated for just one double bond. And then here you have a poly unsaturated because there's multiple double bonds. And then you see your glycerol over here. So we have our glycerol attached to three fatty acids. Now, how do triglycerides form, right? Well, just like we've seen when we build a polypeptide or a polysaccharide, um, now we get to lipids. Lipids aren't built in repeating monomers like proteins, carbs, or DNA are, but they are still built, built with dehydration synthesis. So we can take our glycerol molecule and then a fatty acid another fatty acid and a third fatty acid. And we can actually undergo dehydration synthesis to build one large triglyceride. So the bond that forms when we remove the water, this bond is actually called an ester linkage. So while proteins in their polypeptides had peptide bonds, a polysaccharide with carbohydrates had glycosidic linkages, now the bonds between a, a glycerol and a fatty acid, this bond right here is called an ester linkage. And it's also made by dehydration synthesis. So you would remove a water when you build that ester linkage. So when you build one triglyceride though, you're making or producing three waters. And if you were to break and digest a large triglyceride, you would be adding three waters by the process of hydrolysis to break it. Okay, so um, triglycerides, their main function is for long-term energy storage. All of these carbons here are potential energy. We'll talk about this in unit three in cellular respiration, but all of these bonds can be broken and released energy. So a triglyceride's main function is long-term energy storage. It's going to store our energy for us in a nice, compact way to like, carry it around with us. This fatty acid is way less bulky than carrying around a whole bunch of glucose molecules. Okay, so here is saturated versus unsaturated. Saturated can become packed and form solids at room temperature, while unsaturated are gonna have kinks and remain liquid at room temperature. Now, when we talk about good, for, good fat versus bad fat, um, this saturated fat is what we consider bad fat. Um, when we get clogged arteries, saturated fat is one of the components of that plaque that builds up in our arteries. And then this unsaturated fatty acids is what's in avocados and oils and nuts and seeds. You do need fat and lipids in your diet because we use them to build our cell membranes. Like you need carbohydrates, proteins, um, 
fat when you eat your food because you are what you eat. So as we eat these triglycerides, we can use these fatty acids to build our cell membranes. And when we look at our cell membranes, we see um, these special molecules called phospholipids. So we can see this like cell membrane here, like on the inside is where we find our organelles. And we see how our cell membrane has two layers. Now it's super critically important to remember that all cells are surrounded in an aqueous environment. So there's water outside of cells and there's water inside of cells. So earlier I mentioned that lipids are nonpolar. They repel water. So you might be wondering, well, how can something that repels water be part of the cell membrane that's surrounded with water on the outside and the inside? Well, that is the cool thing about phospholipids. So it's in the name. Part of it is a lipid and part of it has a phosphate group. We also see that it has two layers. Now, if you can hypoth like think about how this outer layer must be okay with interacting with water as well as this inner layer as well. So let's go ahead and talk about the structure of phospholipids. So here you have um, basically a couple different parts. So here we have our glycerol and then we have our fatty acids. Those are our, ooh, sorry. Those are our hydrocarbons. Um, I don't know how I did that. Those are our hydrocarbons. And then we have, right here, sorry, our hydrocarbons that are nonpolar, hydrophobic, the chains of carbons with hydrogens attached. And then you see up here this phosphate group though. So now we've attached a phosphate group that has a negative charge on it. So now this negative charge here, when we look at these phospholipids, so here you have a part that has a negative charge on the head, and then you have your fatty acid lipid tail that are nonpolar. So here you have one region polar, one region not polar, or nonpolar, sorry. So here this is negative, so you're gonna think, oh, it's polar, it's gonna interact well with water. And then so you have the water loving area of the phospholipid, which another way to say that is hydrophilic or water loving, and then you have those fatty acid hydrocarbons, full of carbons with hydrogens attached, with all of the charges evenly dispersed. Therefore, you have nonpolar hydrocarbons that are water-fearing or hydrophobic. So when we look at phospholipids, are they hydrophilic or hydrophobic? Well, the fatty acid tails are hydrophobic and the phosphate group heads are hydrophilic. They have this dual personality, and we call that amphipathic, kind of like an amphibian that goes on both land and water. Okay, so we look at our, our cell membranes and these um, phospholipids. So this yellow part is the part that represents the phosphate group, and this part here are those fatty acid tails. Now, if I put them a single layer into water like this, it is not going to go well. These fatty acid tails are gonna repel water and would not stay in a straight line like this. So therefore, if we add a second layer though, this, these phosphate group heads right here love the water that's on the inside of the cell. And these phosphate groups here love the water that's outside of the cell. It's the center part that repels water. These fatty acid tails exclude water from this region. And so when we look, there's our organelles. So when we look at phospholipids, if I were to drop them into a bucket of water, um, they would not remain free floating like this. Now, if you think about, well, which shape would they take, shape A or shape B? If you drop them into water, they're gonna form shape B because this surface here loves water and this part fears water or repels it. Obviously, if the center of our cells, the cytoplasm is full of water, we can't just have one single layer make up our cell membrane. This is why we need a bi-layer, because this part loves water and this part loves water. So when we look at our cell membrane, you have a whole region that is nonpolar, and then a part that is polar and water-loving. We call that water-loving part hydrophilic and the center part hydrophobic. So that is our cell membrane.
Now I also, I'm gonna go back to the beginning really fast because I just wanted to point out sterols for us. So if we look at um, what a sterile looks like in its shape, I just don't want you to get confused. When we look at these here, these steroid hormones, um, you see this like hexagon shape. Do not get confused with a polysaccharide. This is not a polysaccharide, even though you see those hexagons. That is a steroid um, based molecule or sterile. And so even though they're, it looks kind of similar, it still has the properties of being nonpolar and hydrophobic. Okay, awesome, good job.